in Romans chapter 4, it says so clearly, Paul says, and he's quoting something from the Old Testament when he says, to those whose sins have been covered, blessed is that man. Blessed is the one whose sins have been forgiven. Blessed is those of us who now get to walk around free from our past sin. And if that isn't deeply embedded to the core of you, you're not living abundantly. Now, I need to say that because before we get going, if you think about abundance, you may be thinking I'm only talking about money. But some of us have a scarcity mentality around how we share love with our family members, how we give praise and recognition, how we experience all that. When the Lord says, Jesus says, John chapter 10, verse 10, I've come to give you life and life more abundantly. That I didn't just come to give you life, I come to give you life, an abundant life. Now, isn't it amazing? I don't know if you had this experience, but isn't it amazing how $20 in church looks a lot bigger than $20 at a movie theater? Anybody had that experience? I mean, it's amazing how Dollars don't look so big elsewhere, but we get here and somebody asks, hey, you need to give this. And we're like, oh, now I discover why. In many areas of our lives, and I believe this right now, there's many of us in this room who are trusting God, praying to God, believing God for some breakthroughs in some areas of our lives. And many times it's areas or things that we may not be able to do something with. It's almost like, God, if you don't do it, it won't happen. But in the areas we get to participate in, in the areas where it's an act that we have to participate, it's, for some reason, it's just a lot harder. It's almost as if when God places it in our hands, once we touch it, giving it back is a tangible expression of our faith in him. It is the tangible expression that says, God, I believe this is yours. I give it back to you, signifying that even though I get to keep the majority of it, my giving it back to you represents, I believe, all of it is yours. This principle, this practice. Now, keep something in mind. I already know I'm speaking to some of the most generous people in all of Arizona, if not all of the country, I'm aware of it. I know the amazing things you guys do in this community and the amazing things that you do in this city. And in no way am I saying you don't have this mindset. What I am saying is this, the best always want to get better. And the God that we serve is so good to us that we should never, ever grow content on what we're doing on behalf of the Lord. The Lord never wakes up and goes, I bless them enough. I'm going to stop blessing. No, he continuously pours out. His word says, as our faith grows, he continuously blesses us more. So how much more should we continue to do? This is not a money conversation. I promise you, this is not about, and I, and I always got to make sure I emphasize this, so somebody doesn't push away or rationalize this away. I am not saying, look, you're not giving enough, you need to give some more because CCV really needs the money. No, they don't. This isn't an issue of how much money a church or a group or anybody needs. It's an issue of understanding an abundant mindset. There's a freedom that comes with recognizing who your source is. This point is, faith, um, with 2 Corinthians 9 and 6, and forgive me for this, for, but the point, I want to make sure this point is understood. Faith feeds abundance. Fear feeds scarcity. Faith feeds abundance. Scarcity is fed by fear. So pull that scripture up for me again. It says, remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And whoever sows generously will also reap generously. 
God puts this in place. Next scripture. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion for God love the cheerful giver. What I am not doing right now is that you better give or else. That's not happening. This is how awesome and how loving our God is. God is like, I'm doing all this for you, but at the end of the day, you get to choose. I'm not going to remove choice from you. But I want you to know, look at the next verse 9 and 8. It says, and God is able to bless you abundantly, abundantly, so that in all things at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. There are times we're holding on to stuff, and because we're holding so tight, the abundant blessings he wants to pour over us, we can't get to. Because we're bound. Stuck. He's like, I want you to have abundance in every area. I didn't realize how much I struggled. It's amazing how, how you do one thing is many times how you do everything. And I would justify it, but I knew I had a greater fear of loss than I did of gain. And one of the things that was significant about having a, a rear fear of loss or whatever, I had a mentor of mine who would remind me, he said, Eric, I want you to understand why fear is so dangerous. Hear me now. And why it influences how you do money, how you deal with people. I said, why is that? He goes, because fear is selfish. Fear is consumed with how things will impact you. And he says, this is why fear is so dangerous. This is why scarcity, that mindset is so dangerous because it's consuming. We try to protect. We try to hold on. The opposite of that, the opposite of fear is faith. Faith feels abundance. All right, it feeds it. But what else also, this, the word of God say, it says, for God did not give us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. Fear makes you crazy. Fear makes you hold on to stuff that you should have let go. Fear causes you to get stuck and you live in a world of what's gonna happen if, what's gonna happen if, what's gonna happen if. Do you know in the same scripture I showed you earlier, earlier in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6, it's so practical. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. Follow this quickly before I close. It didn't say get no understanding. It says even as the scripture says, in all you're getting, get understanding. Just after you get your understanding, don't lean on it. Put his trust in him above your own understanding. <laughs>